regular domestic sewing machine and we're using a Singer Heavy Duty. Fabric for the outside panel and we're using a duck canvas. You can also use twill or regular canvas and then a lightweight cotton flannel for the inner lining. And you're gonna want your inner lining to be a lighter weight fabric than your outer layer. A sweatband and these sweatbands are available at capsupplyco.com. A closure for the back. Your pattern in this pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. Once you download and print your pattern off, go ahead and cut it on the outside of the black line. Getting started with the outside panel, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and place it on the fold of the fabric. So once you have it placed, trace it and then go ahead and cut it out. And make sure you do not cut the folded area because you're gonna open it up for your fold pattern. Then go ahead and repeat this process for the inner panel. The inner and outside panel look very similar, but they are just a little bit different because the inner panel is going to be just a little bit smaller. So that way it fits nice and snug on the inside of the outer panel. Let's go ahead and take your outer panel and you're going to want to start sewing up the peaks and you're going to want to do the outside peaks first. Avoid sewing the middle peak. That's all you have to keep in mind. So you can start from the right and work your way towards the left. And this pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance, so go ahead and sew that first peak. And with each peak, you're going to want to do a top stitch on that seam. So flip it right side out, fold over that inside edge, and stitch on the top. And keep in mind, you're going to want to get as close as you can to that top seam. So once you fold it over, place it under and place the needle very close to that seam, but also catching that back edge. And just go slow and sew all the way through. And sew about a half an inch past where it ends. This will round it out at the bottom. Just think about as you're kind of just smoothing over that edge. Then go ahead and repeat this process for the rest of the peaks, but not the middle peak. Avoid the middle peak, do the outside edges first, and then we'll show you what to do next. Okay, now that all your peaks are done, you're gonna wanna go ahead and line up the centers and then sew from the back to the front all the way along that top edge. Then go ahead, flip it right side out, and then do a top stitch all the way across that top seam. And this top stitch is the most crucial because you're gonna wanna get as super close to that edge as you can. And as you can see, our top is not as perfect. You can definitely go closer to that edge because you can kind of see it's flapping over. So that's what I mean. You want to avoid that. But as clo the closer you get to that edge, the more flush and flat it's going to be. So definitely learn from that mistake right there and make yours way better. Now go ahead and repeat this process to the inner panel, but without the top stitching. 
Just remember, do the outside peaks first and then round it up at the end by sewing the entire thing from back to front. The next step is sealing off that back edge and we're going to place right sides together with the middle seams touching and we're going to start at the edge and sew along with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then go ahead and flip it right side out. Once you have it flipped right side out and the inside lines up with the outside, go ahead and do an edge stitch along that back edge. And we did ours about a quarter inch from the edge. And you can totally do two stitches here, one stitch. It's really up to you and the look you're going for. This is pretty much a sealing off that back edge and making it look nice and flat. Next, we're gonna be adding a side strip on. And these side strips are available at capsupplyco.com. All you have to do is sew this onto the inside of the bottom edge. And if you want, you can totally sew along that bottom edge before you add on the side strip because that will just line everything up. But we're just gonna sew it on with the side strip and see how it turns out. I definitely recommend using a side strip because it adds for a little bit more structure at the bottom and it makes it way easier when you're adding on the sweatband. Next step is making the brim. Go ahead and grab your brim, whatever brim you're using. Trace around the outside and down just a little bit past. Then from there, grab your sewing machine and do a straight stitch all the way around that arch. Now go ahead and trim about a quarter inch from that seam. Flip the right sides out and then start maneuvering your brim into position. And if you are satisfied with the look and the tightness, you can skip this next step, but we are gonna be adding some stitches to the top of the brim. And we are using a guide that will be available on capsupplyco.com. It just helps with getting nice, neat stitches around. 
as you can see we're doing one line at a time adjusting it and then doing the next and then making sure they're nice and even honestly you can use any guide for this step something that just keeps that brim from sliding all around Now that your brim is nice and tight into position, I recommend using a zipper foot for this and then go around and make a seam along that back edge of the brim. Pull towards the back of the brim to make that fabric nice and tight as you sew. Now go ahead and trim about a half an inch from the inside of that brim. Now you're going to mark the center front of your crown in the center of your brim. Place the right sides together and I recommend using a zipper foot for this part as well and start from the center and sew towards the outside and once you have one side done do the same for the other side. This helps keep that brim in the center of the crown. Now we're going to be attaching the sweatband. This step we made our own attachment and we made this out of heavier stock paper. All you have to do is make a little sleeve that your sweatband fits in there nice and snug and then go ahead and tape that onto your sewing machine. It serves as a guide so that way the sweatband doesn't slide all around while you're sewing it onto the crown. Once you have your sweatband guide into position, go ahead and roll over the edge and then just start sewing straight all the way around. And it is really that simple. You get a nice top stitch on the outside and the sweatband will be nice and attached on the inside. And we are using professional sweatbands from capsupplyco.com. These are millinery grade and very awesome for making caps. Now we're going to be adding on a plastic snap to the back for a closure. You can literally add whatever you want onto the back. Cap Supply Co. has a huge variety of different components you can add for closures. So go ahead and roll that sweatband over towards the inside and sandwich that plastic component in between and just sew that right on. And it is really just that simple and go ahead and do this for the other side. I do recommend using a heavier weight needle for this process because you are sewing through a decent amount of material. And you can totally pick where you want these to fall. We put ours directly in the center. You can put them more towards the bottom and that's where most companies will put them is directly at the bottom and it's totally up to you where you want them to fall. The next step is air vents. You totally don't have to do this. Most of the single panels don't have air vents but we're just gonna do them on the back four panels. So go ahead and make your marks and make them even and then poke your hole and then add it on. And we're using a die press for this. I feel it's way easier using a die press. If you're looking for a die press, the link is in the description, but you can totally use just regular pliers that you find at any hobby store. And there you have it. That's what it looks like with the eyelets. I personally like the eyelets, but it's totally up to you, whatever you wanna do. 
Then the last step we're gonna be adding on the cover button, and this is a special cover button that is bought at capsupplyco.com. It's specifically designed for caps. So go ahead and cut your little piece of circle and fold it inwards on that top cover button. A little trick for putting that fabric on if you go to the store and get a regular cover button you're not going to have that three prong at the bottom but you can use a little tool that is provided all you have to do is place your fabric over it push your button in and as you can see the fabric is easily folding over so that way you can put your centerpiece nice and snug in and the blue tool is to help push the fabric in and also push the centerpiece more snug we will put a link in the description for this little toolkit because it does come in handy And then we're going to show you pretty much how to do this without tools. So go ahead and push your three prong in the center, line up your top cover button, then just push till you can kind of feel it catch. Then go ahead and take that little blue piece or any soft thing, place it over the button, just tap with a hammer, really locking that button into position. And there you have it. Your single panel cap is done. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. We're going to keep videos coming at you. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share this video with a friend, and we'll see you next time.